Hey guys, so today we're actually going to be in Galatians chapter 6 and we're going to go through verses 1 through 5 and we're going to talk about a topic today that's actually important for us Christians to understand so that we can do it correctly. We're going to be talking about how we as Christians should help other Christians, our brothers and sisters, when they fall into sin and how we should restore them and be there for them. So in Galatians chapter one or chapter six, verse one, it says, Brothers and sisters, if someone is overtaken in any wrongdoing, you who are spiritual, restore such a person with a gentle spirit, watching out for yourself so that you also won't be tempted. Carry one another's burdens. In this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone considers himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. Let each person examine his own work, and then he can take pride in himself alone, and not compare himself with someone else. For each person will have to carry his own load. Now, this is actually really important here, is to understand that when we come to restore someone, we're actually called to do this. You see your buddy or your friend falling into sin and you're like, sucks for them, I'm doing good. Well, I'll let them just deal with that. No, us as Christians are called to go to them. Now, if they fall down the rabbit hole and continue to deny you and deny you, you might have to go for praying for them. But especially initially, if you see them falling into sin and doing it, continually making a habit, you should come to them. You're called to go to them and help them. Because, I mean, if you were in the same situation, you'd want help from someone else. Now, it says when we go to them, to go to them with a gentle spirit. If you catch a friend that's, like, fallen into the sin of, like, stealing or is... Uh, cursing a lot or doing drugs to look cool with all the friends or for, with all their cool people at school. Honestly, you shouldn't kind of go to them going, you're so stupid, how dare you? Like, why are you falling into that sin? They're not worth it. Don't do that. You have to approach them with a gentle spirit because if you don't, all you're going to do is really push them away. We should be pointing them towards Jesus and sharing the love of Jesus with them, showing how what they're doing is wrong without condemning them and, and pushing them further and further away. Unfortunately, it seems to be the reverse. People tend to be like, oh, oh, you're so evil. How dare you fall into sin? And it's like, well, we're all sinners saved by grace. We all can fall into sin. We need to understand that. Now, the cool thing is, Paul here even says, be careful. When you go to do this, when you go to restore someone, be careful. Watch yourselves lest you be tempted too. Because again, like I just said, you are human. You can fall into the sin that you're trying to stop them from going into. You can fall into any sin and it's possible. So you need to be careful and wary when you go to talk to someone about this. You need to check yourself at the door and make sure you're okay. If not, if you're like, hey, I can't handle this, find someone else, one of the pastors, uh, uh, me, one of the counselors, someone to help deal with the situation so that you don't fall into sin trying to help your brother and sister. Now, the cool thing about doing this is when you go with a gentle spirit, go to restore someone, you're actually fulfilling the, the law of Christ, which in John 13, verses 34 and 35, we see that it talks about we as Christians, Jesus speaking, we're called to love one another. And people will know us as Christians by our love for one another. This is important. By going to help another Christian who's fallen into sin and doing it lovingly, we are practicing the law of Christ, loving one another. Because if you love them, you're going to want to go and help them. Now, correcting again, correcting someone in anger is and without love will just push people away. So you need to make sure you're doing this with a gentle spirit and love in a loving manner with, to them. Now, there can be a problem that we get within seeing someone fall. We can find pride in ourselves, which it tells us here to, if anyone considers himself something when he is nothing, like relax pretty much. Because when we see another person 
fall spiritually, when they're not doing as well, we can get this kind of pride in our head to make us think, look, I'm better than them. They fell to that sin. I didn't. I'm doing good. When you need to realize you can fall to that sin just as they can. We are all sinners. We all messed up. We all need Jesus. So this false pride here, Paul is telling us to watch out and be accurate in our mind. Instead of looking at someone else and where they fell to sin, instead look at your own works. Look at what you do. Compare that to yourself and what Jesus called you to be. From there, you can have pride in yourself when you see how you're living. If you are living for Jesus and not falling to sin and temptation and, and, and really living your the Christian lifestyle for Jesus, a life for Jesus, then you can be proud instead of comparing yourself to your neighbors because it's it's easy to compare yourself to someone who's failing and always makes you seem better. But then when you compare yourself to what Jesus has called you to be, that's when it really comes down to, oh, wow, I need to do better or, man, I'm doing good. So that's what you need to do, not compare yourself to others. So it really gets rid of this pride in examining your own work and being honest with yourself. Now, Paul even ends by saying everyone will have to carry their own load. That might sound like a contradiction, but it's not. Because what he's saying here in the beginning where he talks about we should help carry each other's burdens and be there for one another when we fall in sin. He's saying that we as Christians and brothers and sisters should love one another and hold each other up in their, our downfalls. But the whole, being holding our own burdens and accountable for our own actions is talking about the end judgment. When everything we've done in our life is then judged for our actions and what we've done in our life for Jesus. It doesn't matter how hard I try to help someone. The only time that help actually matters is when the person receives it. And that's what matters is them choosing to receive my help and making that action. So again, helping one another is different from what he's talking about here, that we are responsible for our own choices, for accepting the help or sitting in the sin continually. So when dealing with this as brothers and sisters in Christ, when you see a friend, a Christian, fall to sin, you are called to go and restore them, but you have to do it with a gentle spirit. Help lift them up in their time of need. Help them to carry the weight, this burden of sin that they've fallen into. And in, when you do this, make sure that you take your own temperature. Make sure that the sin that they've fallen into, you're not gonna fall with them, but instead you're going to help get them out of it. Now, be careful. Remember, don't get proud. Don't think, oh, they fell to that sin, but I'm so good, I can handle it. Pah, I'm a spiritual tank. Well, be careful, because if you get too proud, you might just fall with them and be stuck in the mud with them. So, be humble in your in your restoring of that person. Be loving and humble and honest with yourself about who you are. And from there, you can be proud in who you are and who Christ has made you to be, has, well, done the work in you to make you who you are now. And you can restore them. And ultimately, in doing all of this, you are fulfilling the law of Christ. You are loving one another. Oh, man. It's, it's really... It's really important. It's something I feel like we Christians fall on. We fall short on. We blame each other. And we go, oh, you fell to sin. You're so horrible. No, we should be loving one another. And honestly, guys, if any of you have fallen into sin, talk to me. Talk to a counselor. Because sometimes we don't see that you've fallen into sin. Just like I've held sin in my life and I haven't told people before. But when you do and when you get help, you can get out of that sin. Sometimes we get trapped. So guys, make sure to love one another, especially those that have fallen to sin, and restore them. So guys, I hope to see you on May 31st for the family service. And guys, I just miss you. So stay safe and God bless.